Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Saturday, August the 6th, 2022. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church, and this is coming to you from the generously provided office I have at that beautiful church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. I'm here to read scripture for you so you can hear it. Why? Because most Christians encounter the Word of God by hearing it, not by reading it. It's only recently we've been able to read. It's only recently we've been able to publish. It's only really recently in human history that uh, there's been widespread education so people could read. The vast majority of Christians who went before us if, as Christians heard the Word of God first. And the vast majority of people who came to know Jesus Christ, who became Christians, did so because they heard the Word and maybe some preaching. But preaching is for another day. Today, this is for just the hearing of the word. And may it work something wondrous in you. We'll begin with Psalm 50, verses 1 to 8, and 22 and 23 verses. And I'll pause for 10 seconds when I encounter the word Salah. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting out of zion the perfection of beauty god shines forth our god comes he does not keep silence before him is a devouring fire around him a mighty tempest he calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people gather to me faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. The one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 2 to 9, and then verses 21 to 23. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel knows not, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Ah, oh, sinful nation! A people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly. They have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. Why will you still be struck down? Why will you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it but bruises and sores and raw wounds. They are not pressed out or bound up or softened with oil. Your country lies desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. In your very presence, foreigners devour your land. It is desolate as overthrown by foreigners. And the daughter of Zion is left like a booth in a vineyard like a lodge in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we should have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. How the faithful city has become a whore. She who was full of justice, righteousness lodged in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross your best wine mixed with water. Your princes are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and runs after gifts. They do not bring justice to the fatherless 
and the widow's cause does not come to them. From the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 to 24, Jesus is speaking. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. This is your eternal word, Almighty Father God. May you be praised always for the good and gracious and generous provision of it to us, and may you grant us through the power of the Holy Spirit the ability to not only hear your word, but to receive it, to have it enter into us and to work in us what is good and pleasing to your will. We pray this to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now from Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest, the reading for August the 6th called The Cross in Prayer. In that day you will ask in my name, I am not saying that I will ask the Fa I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. John chapter 16, verse 26. We are too much given to thinking of the cross as something we have to get through. We only get through it, we get through it only in order to get into it. The cross stands for one thing only for us, a complete and entire and absolute identification with the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is nothing in which this identification is realized more than in prayer. Your father knows what things you need before you ask him. Then why ask? The idea of prayer is not in order to get answers from God. Prayer is perfect and complete oneness with God. If we pray because we want answers, we will get huffed with God. The answers come every time, but not always in the way we expect, and our spiritual huff shows a refusal to identify ourselves with our Lord in prayer. We are not here to prove God answers prayer. We are here to be living monuments of God's grace. I say not that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you. Have you reached such an intimacy with God that the Lord Jesus Christ's life of prayer is the only explanation of your life of prayer? Has our Lord's vicarious life become your vital life? At that day, you will be so identified with Jesus that there will be no distinction. When prayer seems to be unanswered, beware of trying to fix the blame on someone else. That is always a snare of Satan. You will find there is a reason which is a deep instruction to you not to anyone else. Let us pray. Father, I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. I just want to identify with you. That's all. To know that in our hearts we are pursued by Christ, pursuing Christ, that we are wrapped up and in, inextricably joined, and that we come to you not to get your permission or divine your, wi divine your will or learn what we should do next or 
receive something that we desperately want. We just we want to come to be with you so we can be with you. We want to be closer with you every time. May that be the central core of our prayer. Praise be to you, Almighty Father God. Praise be to you, loving Son. Jesus Christ, fully man, fully God. Praise to you, Holy Spirit, God in action, God in power, God in truth. Praise be to you, Almighty God, three in one. Amen. Well, friends, I pray that uh, as you go through these times of listening, that you will hear God's voice, not my voice, not not my inflection, not my expectations. I pray that you'll hear God's voice coming from his word, coming to you in truth and in love. And in that, I pray that will help you draw closer to him whatever distance you are. It doesn't really matter how far away from God you are. The important thing is what direction you're facing when it comes to him. Until we can be together again to do more of what we did today, I bid you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.